Hello, I'm Cooper, and today on Cooking with Cleavers, we will be discussing uh, the Chinese slicing cleaver, uh, also known as a Chinese vegetable cleaver or Chinese chef's knife. Uh, so I presently live in Taiwan and speak and read uh, Mandarin Chinese. Uh, and to get right off the bat, this particular knife, well, this type of knife, the, the Chinese slicing cleaver uh, is called a pian dao. It's legitimately, the characters mean slicer knife, uh, so it is a slicing knife. Uh, another name for knives in general uh, in Chinese is a cai dao. Uh, if you looked online, if I did a Google search of cai dao, I would come up with this style of knife, but it would also include things like this bone cleaver, uh, this western style chef's knife, as well as a Japanese gyuto. Uh, so cai dao, uh, which can be translated semi ma. The characters itself legitimately mean vegetable knife. Uh, however, it can also just mean food knife, and that covers basically any knife used for cooking. So, uh, this knife is a pian dao, most specifically. Most specifically, it is a slicing knife uh, designed for slicing through uh, boneless meats, fruits, and vegetables. So basically anything that is not hard, anything you don't have to hack into this knife is okay for. Uh, and the, a more apt term for it than a Chinese slicing cleaver or a Chinese cleaver is likely a Chinese chef's knife. When we hear the word cleaver, uh, many of us uh, think of something like this bone cleaver, a very heavy piece of metal that you pick up high and hack down or, to cleave through meats or bony meats to break through like rib cages and femurs and stuff. Uh, so the word cleaver is sort of misleading with this knife. This particular or a good Chinese pian dao, Chinese chef's knife, will be incredibly thin. Uh, this model is one of my favorites. It's a CCK 1301. Uh, is incredibly thin uh, at the stem of the knife. Uh, or the spine of the knife, as well as at the blade. Uh, this particular one is less than two millimeters thick at the spine uh, towards the bolster. It's about two millimeters thick. It uh, gets thinner towards the blade or towards the tip of the blade uh, and is like 1.1 millimeters thick here. So we're looking at a very thin piece of metal. Uh, and that's fairly typical for uh, any real Chinese slicing knife. Uh, here's another example of that. A very thin uh, spine uh, and thins out even more as it gets towards the edge. Uh, so very thin blades. In fact, uh, both of these blades at the spine are thinner than a typical Western chef's knife like this Mercer Millennia. This is a cheap chef's knife, uh, but uh, I think it's like 2.5 or 3 millimeters thick at the spine. Uh, and then I have a Japanese gyuto here, uh, which is about 2.2 to 2.5 millimeters at the spine. Uh, interesting thing, if, if we go back to the discussion of cai dao and its meaning and whatnot, uh, the Japanese gyuto, I, I also happen to speak Japanese, uh, and gyuto, uh, legitimately means cow or beef knife. So if we were to use a legitimate translate or a direct translation simply looking at the actual meaning of or at one meaning of the character, this knife would be limited only to beef and we all know that gyutos are basically Japanese chef's knife, their multi-purpose knife and can be used for everything. Uh, the same thing goes for uh, cai dao uh, when we're talking about Chinese cleavers. But back to the cleaver itself. Your typical Chinese cleaver will have a long rectangular blade. Um, if you look online, most people will recommend you get a seven inch 
long a blade. I personally prefer a longer. This, is, this model is uh, about 9.6 inches longer, 243 millimeters, and it's four inches or about 103 millimeters tall. Uh, this is my favorite. I like this size. Uh, seven inches is a little bit small in my opinion and not particularly useful. Potentially an eight inch long or so blade is ideal for most people. Uh, but you have a long, flat, uh, rectangular blade. Uh, it tapers uh, from the spine down towards the blade edge, and at the spine it should be no more than two millimeters thick. If it's thicker than that, it's not so good for slicing. You have to put a lot more effort into your slicing motions. Typically, they'll also have an unfinished wood handle, uh, meaning they basically sand off a piece of wood and hammer it onto the tang, uh, but they don't put any coatings on it. So it's typically a little bit rough. If you want to, you yourself can sand it down and put some varnish or something on it. I don't know, it's food grade. I leave mine unfinished, but I oil them with mineral oil uh, at least once a month, and that keeps them looking good, feeling good, and keeps them from cracking. Uh, the, your traditional Chinese uh, slicing cleavers and all Chinese cleavers will have a, a wire tang or a rat tail tang. Uh, so it's a full tang. It's, uh, the, the blade steel will continue all the way through the handle and they'll bend it over at the end to retain the wood handle. Uh, basically what they do is they hammer the, that piece of metal through uh, the barrel wood or cylindrical wood handle and then bend it over and it keeps it on. Uh, and that's actually pretty comfortable uh, for slicing with that. I have not found any that I thought were uncomfortable per se. Uh, your grip for a Chinese slicing knife uh, will be a pinch grip. You'll use your thumb and index finger to uh, grip the knife. Uh, some people uh, like to use a peace sign style a pinch grip so they put both their index and middle finger on the blade. I do not enjoy that method uh, so I simply grab here. It's important to note that the balance point on this blade is very far forward uh, so it's basically a third of the way down the blade uh, on this particular cleaver. If you were to compare that to a Japanese Gyuto the balance point is basically right at the bolster so right where the uh, blade starts is where the balance point is on a guto and most western style chef's knives have a balance point right about at the bolster uh, or the end of the handle uh, the, the part of the handle that connects to the blade uh, or potentially more heel heavy more towards the handle uh, but all chinese cleavers will have a blade heavy a tip heavy uh, construction uh, this is another example uh, of that in a chin long bezel cleaver. Uh, so we've discussed uh, the typical handle, the blade shape. Uh, typically a Chinese cleaver will have a very flat blade. Uh, that's by design because there's basically two types of cutting motions that are used with this knife. That's a push cut and a chop cut. And for both of those, a flat belly, meaning no rocking. Uh, is ideal. If you were to compare that to a Chinese chef's knife uh, or a, a Western style chef's knife, uh, there's typically a very curved blade because they do a lot of rock chopping. Uh, I don't ever do that and don't enjoy it, uh, but on this blade you'll notice that there's no flats, uh, whereas on a Chinese chef's knife uh, it's pretty much all flat. Or on this model, there's a flat towards the front and a flat towards the back and a flat in the middle. So there's potentially three different flats, but generally it's a continuous flat. That makes it very efficient at cutting through larger vegetables like cabbages, uh, large lettuces, and the like. You don't have uh, edges that aren't sliced, essentially, because when you push down straight, it'll cut through basically everything that's along the bl blade profile. Uh, so they're very, very efficient at slicing through things. Uh, probably more efficient than uh, your Western uh, chef's knives. Uh, that's because uh, in Chinese cuisine, they basically chop, uh, not everything, but most foods in Chinese cuisine are chopped to bite size. So there's more cutting done 
uh, in a Chinese cuisine. Uh, these knives are certainly not limited to a Chinese cuisine. You can use them uh, to make anything. I, I use them for all of my cooking uh, and I eat a lot of American, European -y style food in addition to the Chinese food I also make. Uh, so basically a, a recommendation for a Chinese style knife I personally enjoy uh, the more traditional unfinished wood handle uh, and I like a longer blade. Uh, again, people recommend seven inches. I think at least eight is what's necessary. Uh, and if you can go longer, I'd say do it. Uh, that's somewhat limited by your cooking space, potentially. Uh, and yeah, that's a recommendation for that. Uh, some differentiation uh, that you'll also notice in Chinese chef's knives uh, are blade steel types. The big two categories are stainless steels, uh, which are resistant to rust uh, and stains, and carbon steels, which are uh, far less resistant to stains. If you're somebody who loves knives, loves taking care of knives, I recommend stainless steels uh, in your Chinese cleavers. Um, I found that uh, Typically speaking, Chinese cleavers are less expensive than uh, similar than options for Western style chef's knives or Japanese gyutos, uh, and their steels will often be softer. Uh, the, getting a carbon steel, I found, has uh, made it so I have easier maintenance for uh, my knives and sharpening and whatnot. But if you get a carbon steel knife, you have to clean it uh, immediately after using. Uh, if you don't love knives uh, and don't like to clean your knives immediately after use, if you're the person who makes your food, goes and eats your food, and then goes back to clean up your uh, knives and kitchen, then you're better off with a stainless steel type knife. Uh, and there's lots of different types of stainless steel. I'll get into that in uh, future videos. There's also different types of carbon steel. Uh, but a lot of times with um, Chinese chef's knives, they won't actually advertise uh, the specific types of steel that they use. Uh, so you gotta look at various reviews uh, to see the quality in them. You'll also find that there's differences in handle type. You can get Western style handles. You can get finished wood handles um, and like rubber coated metal handles, etc. Um, the, the handle material probably has less impact on uh, the use of the knife. Uh, oh, another option is an all metal type handle. Um, the best option is to try to go find the knife and pick it up and see if you think it's comfortable uh, before you get it. Uh, oftentimes they'll have Chinese chef's knives, these slicing cleavers. Uh, in West or in Asian food markets or Chinese uh, markets and the like, um, and that's your best bet. You can also find them online on like eBay, and there are some models on Amazon as well. However, Amazon is fairly limited in them because these knives are not very popular uh, in the United States, and that's a shame. Hopefully, uh, these videos will uh, get the word out on these Chinese knives. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to use uh, these style of Chinese slicing cleavers, uh, or uh, there, uh, I will make tutorial videos on how to use them uh, effectively in cooking, uh, as well as reviews on specific manufacturers and models. Uh, so if you're interested in that or learning about the other styles of Chinese cleavers, please stay tuned uh, by uh, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. If you like this video, please uh, hit the uh, like button, the thumbs up thingy. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And please stay tuned for more uh, videos on Chinese cleavers.